Hello everybody, it's me Ronald again. Welcome back to When My Circuit Broke, episode number three. The Sport Science Division from the Singapore Sport Institute has a special episode in store for you today. But before that, you remember this guy, Ripsy? Well, believe it or not, he actually went out for a run. And I hope that you guys have been staying active as well. In this week's episode, we share a little on a simple but delicious recipe that you could use for breakfast. Pancakes. If you're a combat sport athlete, we share a little on a circuit that you could do at home to work on your muscular endurance. And with all this exercising, keeping healthy, especially during the stressful period, we again touch a little on strategies that you can use for your recovery. Lastly, and I'm really excited to say this, for our Muslim community out there, with Ramadan coming up, we have Dr. Rashid Aziz, Head of Physiology at the Singapore Sport Institute and an internationally renowned expert on Ramadan and exercise to share with you tips, strategies and myth busters on how you can exercise and recover specifically during this period of Ramadan. That's it for me. As always, stay active, stay safe, stay home. Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl from the Singapore Sports Institute. I hope everyone is keeping well during this circuit breaker period. Today for breakfast, I'm just about to make some berry and chocolate pancakes. So if you join me, I'll be making use of some antioxidant rich ingredients and pantry staples to create this yummy breakfast. Hi everyone, I'm Sally, a strength and conditioning coach at Singapore Sport Institute. Today, I come with a program to work on muscular endurance for complex sport athletes. Here are two key points to think about. Firstly, do the exercises in the circuit format with no rest time in between exercises. However, do allocate a sufficient rest time of 3-4 to four minutes before starting the next set of circuit. Secondly, do ensure to work for muscular fatigue without compromising on the form of exercises for every repetition. Without further ado, let's check it out.
Hi, my name is Joel and I'm a sports physiologist at the Singapore Sports Institute. During this circuit breaker period, you might be exercising a little bit more. Do you know that exercise can incur things like muscular damage, decrease in energy stores, as well as neuromuscular fatigue? Well, not to worry. Exercise still is beneficial for performance, health, as well as your immunity. You see, while most people think training is the most important thing, recovery is equally as important. Because when we exercise, we are actually taxing our body system. This can result in decrease in energy stores, increase in metabolites, as well as some amount of muscular damage. This results in the fatigue and soreness you might feel immediately or a few days after even. However, if you do have a good uh, recovery system in place, you'll be able to allow your body to recuperate, regenerate and adapt in a positive manner. So in this series, we'll be covering some strategies in order for you to recover positively. So the first strategy is active recovery. Just doing 10 to 15 minutes of moderate intensity exercise has been shown to be an effective way of removing metabolites such as lactate from your muscles as compared to just passive recovery itself. If you do have compression garments or pneumotax, um, those can also assist in the very same way. Don't forget, have some passive stretches of the main muscle groups that you've used for the exercise for about 30 to 20 seconds, do it for 3 to 4 cycles long. If you do have foam rollers or trigger ball, these are good options to also target muscles which are hard to reach at. The second strategy is to fuel up. If you are able to get a hold of some recovery food right after your exercise, that's important because during your exercise you have lost some amount of energy and your body would require some nutrients in order to start the repair process. So some simple foods like an egg or tuna sandwich for example, or even things like a banana, or even something like a chocolate milk which contains proteins, carbohydrates, will be necessary to start the recovery process going for your body. Other things such as hydration also becomes important, especially in such a hot and humid condition like Singapore. In order to know how much water you need to consume, simply look at how much weight you've lost before and after the exercise. That will give you an estimate of the amount of water you should be consuming over the next few hours after your workout. And the last strategy is rest up. So it's important to make sure that you have sufficient rest between your sessions. So if you're thinking of doing some challenging sessions, make sure you have at least 24 to 48 hours between these sessions to allow your body to regenerate and recuperate. Having them too close to each other might exacerbate the stress and you might end up a lot more fatigued during that week. The other ways you can also rest up a little bit more is by having at least 8 hours of sleep each night. This can be helped by having good sleep hygiene such as making sure that you dim the lights before you sleep, do not take caffeine at least 8 hours before your sleep. Remember reducing your screen time and also always making sure you sleep at the same time each night. So I hope this has been helpful for you to know what are some recovery strategies that you can add as part of your workout toolbox. Remember to just mix and match them depending on what works best for you. But remember, recovery is always important as part of your training protocol. With that, stay safe, stay home and stay active. Hi Singapore, my name is Suhaila. I'm a Silat exponent for Team Singapore. I hope that everyone is coping well with the circuit breaker. During this period, it's so important for all of us to continue keeping fit and getting some sun, even if it's just for 5 to 10 minutes a day, to keep our immunity levels up and of course to have healthy balanced meals and sufficient rest and recovery. I've just completed my SILAT specific physical training program prescribed by the SSI Sports Science team. 
What you also saw in the video was me um, training against a virtual opponent on the television who was executing different attacks that I had to respond to. This is known as the perception action training. Because us Silat athletes cannot train together during this period of time, the sport biomechanist at SSI has implemented the perception action training in our program as an alternative method um, in maintaining our motor skills and reaction time uh, in combat situations. Um, it's definitely not as easy as it seems, uh, but I like that it keeps me on my feet. Now that I'm done with my training program, I'm off to make some healthy pancakes recommended by, of course, our SSI dietitian Cheryl. I hope that everyone can stay safe and stay active and of course, stay positive. We're all in this together and we'll get through this together.